Hello and welcome back to my next channel. Yes, I know I have a little shine here. I'm out of commission a little bit. I fell, little freak accident, and I'm all impaired on the right side of my rib cage. And here I have some bruises, but I'm on the mend. And I saw I do a little other video just talking about dogs. I might be all over the place, but since I can do nothing else, let's chat a little bit. Let's chat again about rescue dogs. And when do you bring a dog home, what you encounter. Now I start talking about Nix because I got her at almost one year old and she had all kinds of issues. So if you bring a dog home from a shelter and they are in separate kennels, you have one plus. They are used to be handled by all kinds of people, by volunteers, by workers. So they usually do not have a problem with that. But they can have problems at home. So my Nix wasn't in a kennel. She was in one of the smaller rescue groups where she was in a tribe, in a pack and got integrated there and then we took her home. Most rescue dogs have problems with male at once. It takes males longer to warm up, but that's not in general. It's just most of the dogs. And uh, the reason might be because we women have a softer voice. We are a little smaller most of the time and we handle dogs different and male have a stronger imposing presence than females. But that's just my theory. Uh, so, yeah, you bring your dog home. So I have a quite a few neighbors who adopted dogs who were already adult. And when I talk with them, uh, I see them walking the dogs. They never pull, they never park, they never have this anxiety and fear attacks. And I tell them, how well do you, did you train your dog? And then often I get the answer, well, he came kind of built in with that behavior. Well, you, you get that and that can happen a lot. You're very lucky. Mine didn't come built in with that. that. Nix didn't even know how to walk. So let me tell the story a little bit more detailed as I brought her home. So I went over to a small rescue place in Reading called Casa de Love. Wonderful place run by a very dedicated woman called Lindy. So if you live nearby, check that place out when you're looking for a pup. So she keeps her dogs uh, you know, or she tries to integrate all the dogs into a pack. And that's very beneficial for a dog because they are not scooped, they are not locked up all day long. So anyway, I went over to check her out and I knew she has issues. She was with a couple before and she was not handled the right way. She was put into a shock collar. Uh, and later on, I can almost tell what else was done wrong. So, yeah, I checked her out. She looked at me, she ran around, and uh, Lindy brought another small dog in to uh, ease the anxiety a little bit for Nix. And she was just chasing that little dog and playing. And uh, she saw me, but she didn't come right away to me, it took maybe half an hour to warm up to me, but then she didn't, she didn't come and sat on my lap or cuddled up to me, I just could pet her. So we talked about that and uh, I talked with my husband we, and we agreed to take Nick's home. So she picked her up. It was a real drama, that poor little dog was in shock. So she didn't want to go into the car. 
She was trembling and drooling all over the car seats. I was sitting in the back with her. Then we brought her home and showed her the yard where she can go and do her business, showed her the house, and she was just following around me, which Lindy predicted. She said it just takes longer for my husband to warm up to her. And sure enough, it took longer. So my dear husband spent several hours that late afternoon to sit with her, talk with her, trying to pet her, and that opened her up a little bit. And after that, it wasn't like lovey-dovey right away. It took a whole week, two, three, four weeks until she was really comfortable with him. So keep that in mind, it can happen with any dog. They have to warm up to you. She had to warm up to me too, but she didn't have any other choice than going to the female as she came to us, uh, to a source where she felt more familiar and safer. Now, as I said, some dogs are not like that. They have other issues. So another issue she had, she never walked before. Don't quite understand that. And she wasn't properly socialized. And now that's a problem when they are already adult. If you have a puppy, up to about until eight months, is, you should socialize the heck out with that pup. Because as puppy, they are fearless, like little children. By the age of eight months, that window closes and it gets a lot harder to do that. And keep in mind, during COVID, you couldn't really socialize your dog. So it's still a little problem for us, not in our home. But when we have guests, she doesn't attack them, but she barks. And, you know, every movement, woo, 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 she gets wild. And uh, not everybody is used to have a dog around like that. So anyway, walking. Yeah, so the first time I walked her, just put the gear on the harness, walked around in the cul-de-sac in our neighborhood. She sniffed, but she was very fearful, and I just build on that. And now we are up to 50 minutes when I'm in shape right now. I can barely do the half hour I began with because my ribs hurt. So uh, I build it up slowly, but she still has fears. She knows how to walk properly on a leash, but as soon she smells home, sees it turn, turn direction our house, she gets a little pulley. Not too bad, I can handle her, but uh, I couldn't get that out of her yet. And maybe that will never go away, I don't know. I exposed her to other trails, hikes, and she's comfortable there, but as soon she realizes, oops, we go back to the car, she wants to go fast. And again, I'm used to her. I can handle her so she doesn't pull the heck out of me. But that's still this deep ingrained fear she has. She doesn't do that well with other dogs anymore. Meaning as soon another unsecure dog or a barky dog comes along, she goes bananas. You know the little yappy dogs? I love every dog. But the little dogs tend to be more yappy and are less trained. So they come, wah, 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 and then she goes into, wah, wah, and it's fear bark. It's not attack bark. And uh, she does best with large, very calm dogs. It's no problem. She has several boyfriends on our walk where I can let her interact. And there is a little girlfriend she has in our street that is very calm and secure too, and that works well. So I'm working on that constantly. I try to expose her to other venues, go hiking everywhere with her. I even took her to Petco, which is a challenge too, because she's afraid of the sliding door and then she goes nuts inside. I haven't done that in quite a while because I was working on the outdoor walk. But that's something I eventually 
and going to do again. And there is another thing, and that was only in the first few months. She still had this puppy rage, overexcited attacks. If you ever had a puppy, you know what I mean. They can suddenly go in overdrive of excitement and then psh, they race around the house, over couch, over tables, chairs, you name it. And you can, you barely can stop them. And with a already 43 pound pup at one year old, it's a, little, a lot more harder. So what I did, I just opened the door to the backyard and let her race around there to get it out of her. And she doesn't really do that anymore. She has her energy attacks, but they are not like that anymore. You can interrupt it and say, so stop, sit, lay down. And you can uh, use a dedicated uh, dog bed you maybe have in your living room. And when she gets so crazy and overexcited, just get her there, give her time out, make her lay down there and make her stay. And just train that. If she walks away, you bring her back. And remember, never lose your calm. And that's very, very difficult. I'm by nature a little calmer inside, but I had moments too where I just had to step out a moment, take a deep breath and go again. And then when I'm calm, you know, I can interact with her because anything you do when you're upset or frustrated makes it harder to get the desired result. And also remember, you have sometimes to do things a thousand times over and over again. Not at the same moment when you have a training session, do something maybe 10 times and then stop and let go. But when you walk your dog and it's a puller, maybe have pull, then turn around and walk until they stop pulling, turn around again. Maybe you have to do that 10 times. There is no other you just stop and let your dog sit, even if your dog complains. I do that with mine too. That's actually how I train her. When I walk her and she starts pulling, I just say, come, dug a little bit on the leash and we turn around. And when she walks away from our house, she doesn't pull at all because she wants to go in the other direction. So I compliment her, what a good girl she is. Then we turn back. And if she pulls again, I just turn around again until she calms down and does what I want. And I'm still doing that over and over and over again. And sometimes she's less excited and it's easier and sometimes it's a little harder. These are animals. These are not machines or robots. Always remember that. Another issue she had as she came to us was eating properly. She Sometimes she didn't eat at all, or she ate some, then she ate something outside, threw up, then she didn't eat. So it was a constant battle. I was constantly worried she doesn't give enough food. I, you know, have this mothering thing, which you shouldn't have with dogs, because eventually all of them eat, because they get hungry eventually, if they are healthy dogs. And... That behavior disappeared half a year ago. It just went away. Now she eats all the time. No problem whatsoever. If she doesn't eat, then she feels bad. That always, really almost never happens. So yay on that. That was a big relief for me because I'm mommy. I worry constantly when they don't eat right. Uh, She's hard to train. She's very strong-willed. Actually, she's not hard to train. She just doesn't want to listen all the time. Let's put it that way. She's half Doberman, half German Shepherd. The German Shepherd uh, isn't that averse, you know, it's against being trained. 
They sit before you even say it. But the Doberman has his own will, so you have to repeat and repeat. And they know exactly what you want. They just don't want to do it. The recall is hard with her, constantly working on it. But she knows what she has to do. And I noticed on walks, I have two leads. And sometimes uh, one of those leads comes off, my main lead that's around her neck. And as soon that falls off, because it has a very small loop and she shakes and it falls off. So I only have her on the backup harness. That's why I have that backup. And she stops right away. She doesn't keep walking. And that's a sign to me that she wouldn't run away, except maybe for a cat or squirrel. And I'm not going to risk that. So anyway, so it's a whole host of problems you can encounter that are fairly normal with these rescues. You, you don't have them with you to raise them as a puppy. Now, there are advantages too. Mine came housebroken. No problem at all. That's wonderful. I raised several puppies. And that's stressful, that housebreaking thing. And uh, it's not that easy to train a puppy. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of torn up shoes and blankets, which mine did too because she missed that out in, in puppyhood. But uh, it's in a way easier and faster to adjust them to you. So I'm telling you that so that you are patient when you bring a dog home from a rescue place and that you are aware of it. So many people go to a shelter, go to a kennel and look at those dogs and they sit down and wait for a treat because they are used that when they get handled by a volunteer or worker that they come there and they might get a treat so they know how to sit down and you think what a sweet dog. Yeah, the dog is probably very sweet but it's still a dog. They have energy. And this energy is suppressed when they are in these kennels. And we volunteer to our best to walk them, but we are not there every day. So sometimes a dog misses a day or two of walking because there are so many right now. They are floated because so many people return their dogs that they have adopted because they are not prepared for the energy of the dogs that come to their home, that it takes time and effort. I have mine next uh, May. Yeah, next May, it's two years that we have Nick's and I'm still working on it. Uh, but she's well adjusted to us, so don't get me wrong, that's not the problem anymore. She knows our routine and all that. But you have to be aware this animals. Many of them are strays and some of them have real bad pasts and they have energy. They need to be walked. They need attention, not all day long. Dogs sleep a lot too when they get a good workout. You can play ball in the yard and make them real tired. And they need the little training session that you can do playful so that it is fun for the dog to get your attention. So be prepared when you take the dog home that it isn't all smooth. This is a living being and not a robot who does everything you want right away. Give them love, your attention, and maybe take some training sessions together with the dog to learn how to deal with all these problems. And once you do that and are patient and give them several months, it's not just give up after four weeks or six weeks. It's not good. They need more time to adjust. Some it's smooth, but many of them it's not. And stick with it because the payoff is unbelievably beautiful. If you stick with them and you see the progress, like in mine, 
the first year, she couldn't sit still. She didn't sit next to me in the evening and watch TV. She destroyed every blanket I gave her. She wasn't this cuddly dog. Now, when I go to bed with her, she enjoys having a blanket over her. So I put that over her and she's all curled up and she sticks her nose underneath that blanket. This all cuddly. She sits on my foot and, and a lot when I watch TV under a blankie. She didn't do that a year ago. And I think it will only get better as the years go by. And uh, that's the reward. And when they come to you, when they see you, even if you are just going quick to the mailbox, you come back and they're so excited to see you again, like you left for a Europe trip. That's a reward. When they give you that special feeling, I'm so excited to see you, I love you, I do anything for you. That's the reward. I can cuddle with my little Dobie mix. I can pet her, I can touch her everywhere. She isn't afraid of it. When I give her a pill, you know what she does now? She has allergies, so she needs a daily allergy pill. I go here and say, show me, and she opens her mouth and I can put the pill in and close her mouth and just rub a little and it's gone. I got the pouch now because I also give her an oil capsule and that's too big. She wants to chew it and never let the dog chew an oil capsule. That really stinks when it breaks. But I can do almost anything with her and that's such a reward. And when I go to bed, she, she's excited to go to bed with me. She even looks for me if I'm not fast enough ready sometimes. So there are so many rewards. And please think about that. If you are thinking about getting a dog, breeder, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of getting your dog from a breeder because that's supporting that business, but they don't want to vilify it. If your heart is really set on that, uh, just be prepared. They might have more physical problems when they are pure breads. And uh, this mixed breeds usually don't have the same kind or type of problems physically. And it costs a bunch of money if you are going to, if you go to a good breeder. Just keep that in mind. And if you get the rescue, I really encourage you, if you want a puppy so that you have a clean slate, there are many, many puppies in rescue groups that you can get. We have some puppies right now in our shelter in Reading. You just have to ask for it. And there are a lot of small rescue groups in Reading. They have sometimes litters where you can get the puppy so you can even get the puppy, you can even get the purebred. If you want a German Shepherd, go to a German Shepherd rescue. And uh, there are many uh, purebred rescue groups uh, where they have dogs that need good homes. So that's my little rambling for today. Because, and I hope it made a little sense. I am a little out of it. But I just wanted to do something. So I hope you stop by again. And maybe you even subscribe to Nick's channel. It makes me super happy. And it makes Nick happy. Well, that's a lie. She doesn't know about that. So until next time. Bye.